Welcome back, and as always, I'm glad you're here. Today we're finishing up our study on what is the purpose of the judgment seat of Christ. So let's get started. In today's lesson, I want us to focus on three questions. What are the criteria for judgment? What will be rewarded? And what are the So let's consider this question, what are the criteria for judgment? First of all, all things done in the body, Paul says. So the judgment seat of Christ involves a review of our entire life, that period of time when we are in the body. Secondly, what we have taught about God is the basis of evaluation. Um, remember, judgment doesn't necessarily mean, doesn't mean punishment, it means evaluation. And James 3 uh, speaks here, especially with regard to uh, teachers and preachers, their responsibility to speak the word of God uh, pro properly. Our conduct towards others will be evaluated on that day. Um, our, our traits and our character, our be behavior, uh, especially those areas where we've just refused uh, to grow up. There's a difference between um, weakness and wickedness. And um, hopefully on that day, there will be no wickedness in our lives. Um, but the Lord will evaluate our life. And then uh, fifthly, uh, by our words, uh, by what we have spoken. Number six, we will be judged by things that we have done that have affected other people, but also by things that have only affected ourselves. And then finally, by whether we have given God a good name. I want to say a little bit more about this last one, but before I do, I just want to mention that this is not an exhaustive list at all, but it's a representative list from scripture that gives us a sense and an idea of the criteria for judgment. Let me say just uh, something about uh, by whether or not we give God a good name. This is covered in Leviticus 21, but also in Leviticus 22, uh, which let me quote uh, verse 32, and you shall not profane my holy name that I may be sanctified among the people of Israel. I am the Lord who sanctifies you. There is a concept within uh, uh, Judaism uh, of, of, how we, of how we treat the Lord's name. Kadush Hashem, Helul Hashem. Kadush Hashem has to do with sanctifying the divine name. Halu Hashem has to do with profaning or defaming the divine name. Now, we're not talking here necessarily about taking the name of the Lord in vain or swearing, but rather the Lord here seems to be, he's connecting uh, whether his name is sanctified or profaned, he's connecting that with how the people of God are acting in uh, conjunction with the moral commands of the Old Testament. And that we can sanctify the Lord's name, that is we can make the Lord's name holy in the eyes of the world by the way that we live. I think that this is behind the prayer that Jesus gave us, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Most translations have retained that old English, hallowed be your name. But it, it really just means to be holified or sanctified. So the prayer is, our Father in your name, uh, our Father in heaven, may your name be sanctified. 
And this is what Leviticus 22 is really calling us to. How and how do we sanctify the Lord's name? We, we do it by living as mirrors and reflections of the Lord himself. We, as we sanctify ourselves and allow the Lord to sanctify us, his name is sanctified. As the prayer goes on to say, may your kingdom come and may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So Father in heaven, sanctify your name May your name be sanctified. And how is his name sanctified? By uh, you and I working to facilitate the coming of the kingdom and the, the doing of God's will on earth as it is in heaven. Then we come to our next question, what will be rewarded? And again, this is an exhaustive, uh, pardon me, not an exhaustive list, but a representative list. So bringing people to Christ will be rewarded, enduring trials, loving God's sheep, loving the Lord's appearing, just living our lives in anticipation of his coming again. Faithfulness to God's covenant, just living in a faithful relationship uh, to the Lord, which means uh, keeping the Lord's commands and doing what is right. And doing what is right includes going to the Lord for forgiveness and repentance when we do what is wrong. Incurring costs to follow Christ. And when we look at Matthew 16 and Luke 14, we get, we get a number of examples of this. Forgiving in practical ways to people that are in need who don't have any ability to pay us back for investing your heart and your time in seeking the Lord, for setting aside your preferences for the good of another, for submitting to authority for Christ's sake, even when it's hard, and for using our time, abilities, and, and money for God's mission. Well, our next question is, what are the rewards themselves? And I think it right here we're in a place of mystery because the bible actually says very little about it in fact i think the best we can do is crowns there are five passages that mention receiving crowns as our rewards now i'm pretty convinced that the lord is not talking here about millinery presence you know um I, I mean, I like a good hat uh, like anybody, but I'm not sure we're talking about something that you wear on your head, but rather that these crowns are representative of, uh, the, real, uh, of the reward that the Lord is giving. And I think there's a, I guess there's a sense of surprise here because the Lord just doesn't really tell us what rewards he will be uh, giving to his people at the judgment seat of Christ. So that day may be a little bit like Christmas morning. As we conclude this study, I want to ask the question, what would it be like if we all started living towards the day uh, when we hear our Lord speak, well done, good and faithful servant what would what do it, would it be like if we lived a life of contribution with intention how exciting how purposeful how suspenseful and how a little bit like christmas morning to a child the purpose of the judgment seat of christ is not to determine our eternal destination. That has been determined uh, by Christ at the cross, but rather it is to determine our eternal compensation, rewards for a life of faithfulness. We are saved by faith alone, but the faith that saves never stays alone, and the Lord rewards good and faithful servants. Until our next study, the Lord be with you.